want to know what you can make? Is the point? <laughs> ah, money. Are you interested in money? <laughs> I'll just tell you that because I think people are secretly interested in that. Uh, a starting salary for a librarian where I work is sixty-two thousand dollars, and sort of the top salary as you before you leave um, unionized ranks is about eighty-six thousand dollars. Do we have a higher bid? <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. I have a question for the gentleman from the University of Guelph. 
Um, you mentioned that the profession is changing and uh, there are lots of trends and opportunities. And I'm just wondering if you could talk about some of the challenges and also some of the trends that you're seeing um, that you think that are upcoming. Sure. So the question was, um, the profession is changing. What are the sort of trends that I see? What are the sort of challenges around those changes and those trends? Um, but that'd be, that'd be yeah, I, you know, I think when we think about I started as a cataloger too. Um, I think we start thinking about, about those sorts of, uh, maybe called them traditional skill sets. What we're seeing is those sort of things maybe come back, but in a very different kind of way. So if I think of what's happening right now, uh, and particularly, I'm going to speak in the context of, of particularly research libraries perhaps, but uh, a much more intense interest in the research process and how libraries and librarianship Libraries, librarians can um, can really be deeply involved in that research process for faculty and for grad students. So we're no longer just providing the stuff they might use for the research. We're actually on the research teams, doing part of the research, guiding the processes. So it's much more of project management. It's much more research intensive kinds of work. So where before we might be in a service role to those research organizations or research projects, now we're actually team members. Uh, and that's pretty dramatically different. A really particular example actually relates to something that Leo was talking about in terms of analytics. Uh, a huge amount of what we're doing now is trying to manage research data, uh, raw data coming out of research programs, and it's screaming out of them. You know, not merely terabytes, but more so, more, more than that. And how do we make sense of that, how do we manage it, how do we preserve it, our obligations to people? Whole new territory in terms of, of how we might respond to what we might do. So I think that's a, a pretty key piece. Um, you know, it, it's also larger issues like changing the nature of scholarly communications. We've been consumers of scholarly information for a long time. We buy it, we stick it in places, and we make sure people get at it. Now we're actually involved in reshaping scholarly communication in different ways. So how do we build new vehicles? How do we uh, build new rights management systems or, or access systems for that material? It isn't about one end of the spectrum. It's the whole soup to nuts part of of research communications that we are involved in and actually trying to reshape and change. So if you think about something like the open access movement, um, which is lots of different players, but librarians and, and libraries uh, play a central role in enabling, convincing, and controlling and, uh, people to, to move in that kind of direction. So pretty strong piece. And I guess the last one is really the technology side where everything's changing. I mean, it's just every 10 minutes there's something different. And the real challenge there isn't to be an expert in all that, but to try and understand the impact of what those new things might be. So, you know, when when Twitter, we all talk about Twitter, interesting that. when Twitter came out, it was three years ago, um, lots of people thought of it as trivial and stupid, and probably lots of people still do think of it that way. But it's it's the most amazing information system I've ever seen. And if for not for no other reason than that look at those kinds of tools and try to extrapolate from them what they, what they will mean in terms of systems, communication, uh, transfer of ideas and information. Because it, it won't be Twitter maybe five years from now, but it'll be something else that, that, that has those characteristics and be able to understand them articulate them and take advantage of them hugely. I wonder if, um, you You've been involved in a couple of documents that, that look at the far horizon. Whether you would just like to mention the existence of those two documents as well, the 2020 Carl document and the 2030 ARL scenarios for which I believe you were on the advisory. I had sort of involved in, yeah, one of the, this is this is a interesting step if you want to look at it. There are um, there are some recent investigations in terms of long-term scenario plan, which is what one is talking about. Thinking about the future in um, a fairly long time frame, ARL, I really would recommend the ARL to your traditional research libraries. Um, they looked at 50 years and, and essentially said, 30, 50 years ago, and, and essentially said, what would be the dynamics that were shaping that environment? And in a sense, what should we pay attention to? It wasn't, here's what the future will look like. It's, here are models of things, trends of things, that might shape the environment in some interesting way. Next came with five different kinds of scenarios which they articulate and explore in this case documents. You can get it online from um, This is his research papers. And I really recommend it to you because it isn't prognostication, it isn't this is going to happen. It's 
here's what's going to influence the environment you're working in, and then how would you respond if that sort of thing started to happen? So how would you respond, for example, if the environmental crisis got so hard and difficult that energy was notoriously expensive, we couldn't travel anymore, we had become much more local, not global. How would that affect what research libraries do or what libraries do? Or what would happen if all of a sudden the center of innovation and research moved to, say, China, where there's enormous investment in, in R&D and in academic libraries and research libraries? How would that affect the way scholarly communication work? How would we establish partnerships? How would we react differently with publishing? Um, so they're really interesting um, kind of thematic trends, which uh, I would certainly recommend.